Hey guys, this is Post Production Pi with SRLound.com. All right, so we have gone through the importing basics and we brought our images into Lightroom. Now let's bring back up our import dialog box and let's go over it in detail and cover all the different features. So I'm gonna hit Control Shift I or Command Shift I on a Mac to bring up my import dialog box again. And let's start again with a source. Now, just because in the last tutorial we moved our images, I actually went and created a copy and put it back in that same folder. So I'm going to go to that same folder where I initially uh, looked at the images first, where I pulled the images from, and they were in the exercise files under 00 originals. Okay, now I'm going to show you guys something. If we have 00 exercise files selected, the only thing that is showing is just that JPEG photo for the SR Lounge logo and is not showing the images that are actually inside of this originals folder. And the reason why is because we haven't selected this include subfolders option right here. If we include subfolders, then it's going to include all the images that are contained within subfolders inside of whatever folder you have selected. So now it's showing all those images. Now, while we're still on this left panel, let me go over quickly. There is another way to access a source folder. And if you're accessing places like uh, the desktop or documents and stuff like that, it's easier to access it from up here. So if I click this menu up here, it'll actually give me quick shortcuts to the desktop, to my pictures, my videos, or other sources. And so it'll also show you recent stuff as well. So if I click on desktop, it automatically takes me to my desktop folder and shows me everything on the desktop. So that's just a quick nav option on, uh, on getting somewhere fast by using the top menu if it's somewhere that's kind of a standard location uh, on your computer. Let's go back once again to this exercise files folder. We're going to have this include subfolder selected so it's going to show me all my images. And now check this out. Inside of my preview area um, it's actually showing all these images as grayed out. And the reason why they're grayed out is because they are already inside of my catalog file. So Lightroom is actually recognizing based on the metadata within these images that they're duplicate images and that they're not going to be imported again. The only images that are going to show up are the ones that are checked and they're showing up nice and bright. They're not kind of faded out like this. Now, if we want to change our view, we can actually change our view. Right now it's showing all photos. If I only want to see the new photos, the ones that are going to be imported, then I can click on new photos and it only shows me just that one logo. I can also switch my view to view what's in the destination folder. So this is again going to show me a duplicate because everything that's in the destination folder is actually in that uh, source folder as well. So let's go back and click on all photos. Now while we're still talking about this content preview area, let's go down to the bottom and see that there's a couple more options. We can change our view the same way that you would inside the library module. You can click these icons right here. This one is the grid view and this one is the loop view. Or you can do the same thing that you would in the library module which is just hit E for loop and G for grid. So if you want to preview an image up close, you just click it and then hit E and it'll bring it in the loop view. You can preview that image and then you can go back to grid view where you can see all of the images. We can also control the size of our thumbnails for browsing and we can also turn on sorting by any sorting system that we want, whether it's capture time or file name. It only gives us four here because those are really the only four that you need to sort by when you're actually importing images. Now last thing on this window is we have the check all and the uncheck all options. Uncheck all is going to basically uncheck all the images so nothing is imported while check all is going to import everything that's not already a duplicate. We can also go through when importing and we can actually choose what we want to import just by clicking the check button on a specific image. Now it only gives me this one image to check right now because the rest of them are duplicates and so those won't be imported automatically. All right, now going up to the very top of this window, we have our different actions. So let's go over those in detail. Copy as a DNG is going to basically take the raw image and it's going to convert it and copy it as a DNG, a digital negative file. Now, when we went over preferences, we talked about how when you do DNG copies, I would recommend that you keep the embedded raw within the DNG file. That way, if you ever need the raw, you can still access it. If you didn't select that, then when it takes these images, it's going to convert them to DNGs and you will not have the original raw anymore. So if you use DNGs, feel free to use that. I don't use DNGs because I don't use any other third-party applications other than Photoshop and Lightroom. So there's no other third-party applications that are using DNGs. I have no reason to use them. But you guys might in your workflow just depending on what you're doing with these images. So what I'm typically doing is I'm using these three. Copy is going to take a copy of those images and do exactly that. It's going to copy it to a new folder. Moving is going to move those images from the source location to the new location. And adding them is going to leave the images in the source folder while adding them to the catalog. So adding them is useful because if you already have, say, put the images into the correct catalog folder under 00 originals, you just haven't imported them yet, then all you do is select that 00, 00 original folder or whatever you name that folder, you just select it, 
click add and then you import it and it would just import those images into the catalog without actually moving them. You'll notice that when you add an images, you don't have options on destination over on the right side. Okay, let's go back to copy just so we can see all the different options on the right side and let's go over this right side panel now. Now on the right side, we again, we can click at this very top and we can see our quick locations right here or we can choose from other recent locations or clear those recent paths if we want to. Now more often than not, I'm just choosing my location down here in my destination panel uh, and then I'm specifying a subfolder which is always my 00 originals folder. And for organize, I always put it into one folder. I don't organize by original folders or by date. I just want all my images in that one single folder. This is really a workflow option that you guys need to decide on your cell phone. But uh, for us, it's kind of uh, annoying to have it by date or by anything else because say, for example, if we're shooting a late night event and it goes from 11 o'clock past midnight, well, it automatically gets separated into two different dates then when it goes into this folder. So you have date for you know day one and then past midnight is day two, when in actuality those are all the same event and you want them all in one place anyway. So I always just do into one folder. You guys can decide on this on yourself. So we've already talked about the destination stuff a little bit. So let's close up this panel and let's go over the other options that we have on the importing. Starting with file handling, we have the option to render previews when we're actually importing these images. Now what that is, is these are the previews that are going to be rendered along with these images so that while you're developing, you're not having to wait for, say, browsing thumbnails or, say, browsing, uh, uh, you know, actual working on images and stuff like that. Now the minimal is what I would typically use so that just I can see basically thumbnails and just preview images. This standard is going to end, render larger images and one-to-one -one are going to render full one-to-one -one images for when you're using the develop module and you're actually processing. What I would recommend to speed up the import process is to put this on minimal. Then when you actually finish importing, you guys can always render previews by going into the menu and selecting render previews. I will always render previews before I start working. But selecting render previews as standard or one-to-one -one during the import process is just going to slow it down. So if you have multiple cards that you're importing, it's just going to take longer and longer to import because it's going to be rendering previews at the same time. So for ease of importing, I always keep this on minimal. Next, I always select this don't import suspected duplicates. Now if we uncheck this, you're going to notice something. All of these are going to become uh, bright again because it's going to re-import all of these images and then we're going to have duplicate images in our catalog. Now keep in mind that Lightroom knows just because an image has the exact same file name, Lightroom's not going to interpret those as different images. Say, say you had two cameras at an event and both image, cameras recorded image 366, but they're both two separate images that were shot by two different photographers. Lightroom understands this. It's not going to, uh, it's not going to treat those as duplicates because it's reading from the metadata. So I always keep this don't import suspected duplicates checked because I don't want duplicate files in my catalog. Lightroom knows when an image is a duplicate and when it's not. So it's, it's a safe option just to always have kind of selected. Next, we have the option to make a second copy of our image. If you want Lightroom to actually create image backups at the same time, you can check this and then select a location on where you want those images to be backed up to. This is handy if you, if you guys maybe don't use, like say, redundant dot drives like RAIDs to backup your images. Maybe you have just two separate hard drives, you actually want to create a backup, then you can do that then. But it is going to slow it down again because once again, it's going to create a second copy while you're importing. So I usually have this unchecked when I'm importing. Number one, to save time, and number two, because we run off of uh, RAIDs anyway, so they're already backed up. They're already redundant drives. All right, let's close up our file handling panel, and let's go to our file renaming panel. This will allow you to actually rename files when you're importing those files into Lightroom. Now, typically, I don't rename my files until I'm actually ready to export, so I leave this turned off. But if you want to turn on, you have the option of basically select, uh, setting up your own template um, or editing a custom template here. And this is the same file renaming dialog box that pops up whenever you want to rename your images. And we're going to go over this at a later point in time, so we'll kind of skip over this now. But it's pretty self-explanatory. You just choose a file name, you choose a numbering system, anything else that you want added, and then hit done, and it'll create you your own little custom file name editor uh, setting. So let's close this. The extension I always leave as is. You can change it if you want uppercase, lowercase. It's really just a matter of preference, and I really don't care about how the extension looks. So I'm going to uncheck rename files because that's something I don't typically do until afterwards. Next we have apply during import. Now these are different develop settings that we can apply during the import process or different metadata settings that we want to apply or different keywords. We can do one, two, or all three of these options at the same time. So 
what I usually do is I'll set up a develop setting for a general import setting. I have my metadata preset that we did previously when we set up that metadata preset for SR Lounge. And then I typically don't do keywords across all of the images because I want each image to have its own individual keyword, so I leave that as blank. But if you do want something applied, you type it in here. Maybe you'd say like, you know, uh, whatever you want it to be. Um, shots and then comma for a new keyword. I want it to be Canon 5D Mark II because that's what these were shot on. And then we'll say Canon for another keyword. Whatever you guys want these keywords to be. I find that I want my keywords to be more, you know, I'm not creating generic keywords. I'm creating specific ones. And to do that, I need to select individual images to do that. So I usually don't create keywords during import. All right, so that takes care of all of our right side panel options over here. We already went over destination previously. So let's go on to the next tutorial where we're actually gonna create our import preset.